So I got kind of bored of Protoss and decided to give Zerg a shot since I kept getting owned by them. So in this video, this is my attempt at playing Zerg. Since it's a random game on the opponent, I can't wait for my slow overlord to get all the way over there, so I sacrifice a drone to go over and just check what race they are. And I see the barracks and the supply depot building, so I just run him back before even checking out what he has so he doesn't get trapped. One of the really big changes with Zerg is the way that the Queen works now, and it's basically a macro unit where you can use it to spit on a hatchery and it will spawn four larvae after a certain amount of time, which you can then use to build a lot more units. Another nice change is the way the land defense for Zerg works. They're called spine crawlers now. They're basically the same thing as Sunken Colonies, except more powerful. And there go the larvae. As you can see, it really didn't take much time at all. Another major change is the way that Hydralisks work. They're now a tier 2 unit, which means you need a lair, which I am teching to right now. After the upgrade finishes, I build my Hydralisk Den and build some Zerglings to help supplement defense, which come in very handy when the Marines decide to attack me. As you can see, the Spine Crawlers are very, very helpful against weak units like them, especially when they have Zerglings to tank for them and assist them in damage. The other big thing is that creep actually means something now, since your units move very, very fast on it compared to otherwise. Now that I have Hydralisks, I'm going to go and kill those marines that just tested my defense again. And they just got owned. One really nice thing about Zerg is that you seem to always have excess minerals and it's very very easy to build an early expansion compared to Protoss for example where I seem to constantly be starved for resources and can't find a time to expand where I'll have extras. I burrow my Hydralisks here so I don't just get run down by siege tanks because they're the one real Terran counter to mass land Zerg units. And as it turns out, this choice becomes extremely beneficial because as I'm sending my Zerglings out to capture the towers so I have bigger vision radius, I see him come in with Hellions, which are really, really good against light armor units like the Hydralisk. So I sit here and wait for them to run past me toward my, ha toward the, toward my hatchery, and then pop up and start killing his weak marines and marauders from behind, and his Hellions can't catch up. As I'm building up my army, I do my best to fly my overlord at the extreme range of his scanner tower, which allows him to see my blips on his map when I get anywhere within that little red circle there on the UI. The last really big Zerg change in this video is the way that Nidus networks work. The way that you use them now is you have the master building in your base, and what it can do is it can spawn worms anywhere where you have vision for 100 minerals and 100 gas. So the other way that it unloads units is it treats it like a vehicle with infinite capacity, and you can spawn the worms anywhere, which I do right here, and as soon as it finishes building, then you can unload all of them like any other vehicle. The one problem with them is that if you stick them in a corner like this, they 
run out of room to unload things, so you have to move them away to keep unloading more. So, in this battle, I don't know why, but he doesn't convert his siege tank into siege mode. If he had, he probably would have won. I take out everything else of his with ease, and continue to go through his base while I build more Hydralisks. Eventually his siege tanks do stop me from killing more of his buildings, but not before I kill most of everything that can construct anything. I retreat back to my worm and burrow down, but they go up and find me and kill my connection there and kill all my units that I have left over. After scanning his base, I find out that he's not going to fall for the same trick again and is watching for overlords, so instead I decide to just go with a frontal assault and hit a Nida Swarm in the back once he has all of his units distracted in the front. Here I put up the worm and doubled my force size in about 20 seconds and go through his base and rampage everything that he has left. 